Yeah. Because you guys only do fun stuff. It yeah, our neighbors like- probably thought we were crazy because like someone would like drive up into our driveway. They'd get out of their car wearing like a suit and like boxers. And then the garage would come up. They'd walk <laughs> in the garage. The garage would come down. 15 minutes later, the garage would come up. <laughs> they're like, what are these people doing? <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, <laughs> a news truck would show up. And then they're like. <laughs> it was really- yeah, I'm be- gonna expound on the things people probably thought you could have been doing in your garage, but I don't think any of them would have been legal. Okay, well, welcome to one fresh podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Kautz. My sound man and silent partner, Aaron, is lurking in the corner. And our guests today are the delightful and insanely talented workman family. We have got Alex, we've got Chelsea, and most importantly, we've got teeny baby Charlie. Oh. We figured on the One Fresh podcast, we should have a One Fresh child. This is the freshest, this is the freshest baby. We really believe in keeping the brand strong. Okay, so you've got 10 more months before you can be on here again. We'll just have ah! a fresh baby every time, right, Chelsea? Just like a clown car. Just like shoot him. Okay. <laughs> How old is she? Like two weeks? 12 days. 12 days. Oh. And she's so sweet and precious. And I, I do want to tell you guys, I pulled up your website earlier today. Um just to kind of refresh myself with all of the wonderful things that are the workmen's and your website says that you are the proud parents of Keegan and Oliver. We got to update that. Well, we need to update that. Photos tomorrow. Oh, fun. I shall be updated as soon as photos are delivered. Yay. I love it. I'm excited. So have you guys on here and thank you for being on here. It's so sweet. And you get bonus podcast points from doing this from your bedroom and agreeing to do this with a newborn teeny baby. It's so sweet of you. Um, but I want to talk about, you know, you guys. And when we were talking before we started recording, Alex asked me if I remember the first time we met. And I really don't. I'm going to say that I, I think we... I followed you guys because of Ariel Tallahassee. I'd been following you there for a long time um, because you do these amazing aerial shots of Tallahassee landmarks and just general landscapes. And it's really fascinating. It's kind of a fun game to see if you can figure out like, oh, where was this photo taken? I don't like the game. No. I love the game. Oh, pretty hard. <laughs> but it's fun. And so I knew of you from there. And I feel like I probably met you because of Domi? 100%. Okay, but I don't remember anything else. So you are going to share what is hopefully not an embarrassing story. No, not an embarrassing story at all. The first time we ever met, you actually handed us a pizza from Gain Street Pies at Proof Brewing Company. We are, we are sitting with, uh, we are over with like Dom and Lucas. And it was like before y'all started a uh, Get Started. Oh. Before that? Yeah, yeah, it was before it gets started. You, Don was like, come over here. And we were like playing at the family way playground with the boys, boy, yeah. with just Keegan. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we came over and Dom's like, sit down. He's like, these are my friends, Aaron and Adrian. And Addie was there too. Of and course. you're like, we want extra pizza, like eat our pizza. And we're like, <laughs> I okay. love these people already. We have not even like shook hands, <laughs> high five, fist bump, but they're giving me food so <laughs> blessings thank you for not only filling my tummy but making my bed super comfy we're the nicest people i do my my love language is giving gifts we had friends over yesterday and i was sending them out of the house with just like oh hey you think this candle smells nice take the candle oh hey do you guys need more pillows take them <laughs> aaron's like stop it <laughs> it's a goodwill drop off when you can have guests you just take these nice things. So I want to talk about, I mentioned Ariel Tallahassee and I, I intentionally, I didn't do like research on you guys. So my, I, I'm going to learn about you guys while we have this conversation. I know you because of Ariel Tallahassee. 
I know why you started Ariel Tallahassee, but I want you to share with our guests who are watching what was the the driving force behind starting that project. <laughs> uh, yeah, Be I mean, it, it was a really simple like we moved to Tallahassee and hated it here, uh, and it was it was really hard. The transition was difficult for us. We Chelsea's from outside of Seattle. We moved here from Atlanta. And moving to a small town for us was really difficult. And uh, when people would tell us that meeting at this place is 15 minutes all the way on the other side of town and that's too far or that traffic is really bad and they'll be three minutes late and they're stressing over that. Like for me, that stressed me out because I'm like, <laughs> I find peace in the, in the, in the craziness of big city. Uh, and, and so we, we really struggled being here for a good, for really that first year and about a year in we, kind of had this moment where we had to say, we have to learn to love where we live. And if we learn to love where we live, then, um, then our lives are going to be better. Like just from a mental health standpoint, from just getting, getting um, off the bed in the morning and saying like, today is going to be a great day because I love where I live. And that was a journey for us. But the journey really began by saying, we have to learn about the place that we live. And we didn't really know many people who lived in Tallahassee. Uh, and the people at the time that we, when we first moved here, were in a small kind of like neighborhood on the Northwest side of Tallahassee. We didn't really go anywhere else other than like our apartment to there, to Publix, to Costco, like whatever. And I remember sitting on the couch one day, like on Wikipedia, cause like when you search Tallahassee, Wikipedia is the first thing that comes up. <laughs> and I'm like, Tom Brown Park, I wonder what that is. So I type in my iPhone and I'm like, let's go. And so we, we went and drove around Tom Brown Park and took photos with the drone. And, um, and, and that was kind of an interesting journey um, to really explore the city. That but how did you, Tallahassee is such a, I love Tallahassee. We, we're huge Tallahassee fans. It's not the, a perfect town, but there are many, many positives about it. But it's not number one on someone's list when they're like, I'm excited. I'm going to move somewhere that's going to be awesome. I mean, unless you're going to FSU for college, like Tallahassee isn't a, a, a destination. So how did you guys even wind up here in the first place? Um, I, I took a job with a nonprofit in town. We gotcha. got married. We got married in March of 2014. We moved to Tallahassee in um, June of 2014. And Ariel Tallahassee started in June of 2015. That's awesome. And so you had, you had a day job then. Fascinating. Yeah. Because now here we are, 2020. And I think, um, gosh, Chelsea, the last time I knew you to have a day job was when we came over for dinner and there was no Oliver. There was only Keegan. So how many years ago was that? Three, four? I had a day job. I, was, I stopped October 2017. So. Yeah. So you guys... She's an awesome mom, which is like shout out to all the moms out there. Day job number one. Yes. So I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to like minimize the amazingness that she does. Every. Oh time. no! Oh my God! Absolutely not. I'm looking at it more of a perspective of yeah. the fact that you guys started a a, a project really, and yeah. then. Um, were you doing like photography work? Because Alex is an incredible photographer and you've, your work has only gotten better as long as we've known you. I've seen, I've even had friends text me recently and say, oh my God, like Alex's work is so good. Like I swear to God, um, because it, it really is great and you've grown so much, but did you do photography for professionally, like for the nonprofit? Is that what you did? Yeah, I, so my mom's an art teacher. I grew up um, creating stuff. My mom, I remember like early on in life, maybe three years old, uh, my mom had this thing she called the magic art box. And it was a giant Tupperware <laughs> container with random stuff in it. She's Final like the cap. Mrs. Frizzle of art. 110%. Like Miss Frizzle is a great representation of my mother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like if, if, if Miss Frizzle was Greek, she may be my mom. <laughs> And uh, so I, I learned to create, my mom is an incredible artist um, in her own right. She's an incredible faux finisher. She is a credible educator. She was an art teacher for years, um, curriculum writer, brilliant. Um, I, I just took, I took the digital approach to things. Um, that's probably like generationally as, as time moved on. And, and she's more of like a fine art um, standpoint. But 
I, I just, I started shooting photos and, and video at, at middle school. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I, no one ever really taught me anything. And I, I just had this desire. I would just, I would go walk the dog and bring a camera with me and take pictures around the neighborhood. That's awesome. And that's how I find kind of my, my piece. Um, my, my dad, like we had, I, I, comparatively I didn't have a rough childhood but my, my dad my dad was an alcoholic um, my dad left for the third and final time my junior year of high school um, and so there were a lot of moments as the, an older brother with a brother who's six years younger than me that 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 I kind of assimilated a role probably bigger than a big brother um, but and I would need to find find a, a way to have a uh, a little bit of peace in life and like and an I, outlet for yourself I found that through creating art but that's also a reason why we really want to own our own business and we being a present father is the most important thing in the world to me and um many people know that oftentimes my kids show up at photo shoots <laughs> that's um, a bonus like i love i love a little uh, we we were we were at um, Governor DeSantis's office two weeks ago with all of the kids shooting portraits, um, and 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 that that might that's I guess that's just our shtick, um, but like we we believe in creating as a family um, for families. Um, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but I guess my, my <laughs> you're I, fine. No, I love it. Uh, like here, here's what I'll say: like we live in a really really divisive community in general not only like culture um, in, in the U.S. in 2020. I mean, we, one of the biggest things that we saw when we started taking aerial photos was like segregation in the urban environment. Like, you know, when you leave one section of town and go to another, which is very different than it was in Atlanta, where we would drive 40 miles and go through 40 different municipalities. Um, and you didn't know when one started, one ended. Here, there's practically a line. Right. Yeah. Railroad tracks. Um, yeah. What, so... Uh, at the end of the day, like we are all human beings and stories that I want to tell and I, we want to tell and we want to be a part of, of sharing and what makes our community great is its people. And I think oftentimes in a community that is so defined by politics or... Because um, we're the like, capital city and we're very politically... Yeah, yeah it's true. Uh, my wife used to work for an author named John Maxwell. She, he, he like leadership guy, but he, he would talk about positional leadership versus relational leadership. <clears throat> and, and positional leadership only gets you so far. But oftentimes I, I feel like in Tallahassee, there is this view that positional leadership is everything. And, and I really believe in, in, in like the only thing that can break the lid of positional leadership is relational leadership. And, and in the stories we hope to tell, whether it's the governor, I want to tell the story of him as a father yeah. and, a, and a husband, because parenting is hard. Whether we agree or disagree on policy, we can have common ground on parenthood. We can have common ground on being husbands and working together with our wives. And, and I think if we approach situations with that perspective to say, hey, where are we united and how, how are we, can we yeah. not on position, then I think there's so much more grace. We can, we can find so much more common ground and then ultimately we can accomplish a lot more in building a better city together. And you two are like the nicest people. And I, you've been here in Tallahassee for much less time than, than I have. I lived here, I moved here in like 2001 and I'm still from, you know, this is local for me. You guys have only been here since 2014 and I swear to God, you know, Thou, for every one person I know, you probably know a hundred. You guys just, and it's because you've set out to do this. Your copy dates, you like, you have a current, like a scheduler going. You're not doing it right now, are you? Surely you're not. Where you can, somebody can sign up for a coffee date with you. Just like, oh, we'll go have coffee. Yeah, we have a rule in our house. A rule. Um, we have coffee with someone we've either never met or don't know very well every week. Um, typically, usually end up being Alex, just because I have the kids to wrangle. Yeah, you got a couple things going on. Um, <laughs> but then every week we have someone over for dinner. Um, whether like, there have been people that we have met <laughs> coming through our door, um, That's amazing. But we have people that we know. Um, but the the conversations that happen around a cup of coffee or a dinner table um, 
you it's so much more relational than like sitting in an office and having a business meeting like we invite people into our reality into our crazy because dinner with now three kids is nuts and yeah. it is what it is and our house is perfectly clean and i i cook and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't <laughs> It's who we are and we want people to get to know us as real people and we want to get to know people regardless of their position, just who they are. We want to know their story. And so that's been, it's been fun inviting people over and we've gotten to meet people that we never thought we'd be able to meet. Um, so it's been, it's been good. No, and I love it. And so you guys, your business as the workmen's is very focused on telling people's stories. You probably, that's probably in the bio. We, we tell people's stories. And so you get to do beautiful photographs of people and families. And, um, a lot of it over the last couple of years was more, you know, business or editorial based, like you're doing photography for someone, um, for going in a magazine that's business related. But during COVID, we got to participate in like hundreds of people, right? Like how many? 120? Not close to 200. 200. You guys did COVID wear and you got to meet people from all walks of life, all family types, all different day-to-day realities. So like tell, obviously we know what COVID wear was because we were some of the first to be in it. No big deal. But tell us about COVID wear, how it came to be. <laughs> what would you say, Alex? Aaron edits it on top of the video. <laughs> <laughs> but so yep. how did you guys come up with that? A good looking dude on that one fresh skateboard. Oh my God, he's so cute. It's annoying. <laughs> it's a burden being such a dude. Oh, with the, he's got the beard back too, Alex. He's got the beard back. Oh, I love it. Fine. Enough about my husband. Talk to me about COVID <laughs> wear how you guys came up with it and, and about how it was received. And you guys got a lot of press from it. So talk to me about that. Um, so if you couldn't tell already, Alex is an extreme extrovert. Um, <laughs> he thrives okay. on people and relationships and things happening. Quarantine is my worst nightmare. I yeah. thought we were all going to die. Um, so we needed to do something. Um, mostly for the sanity of our family um and just our well-being um we had we found out we were pregnant in february um so starting quarantine chelsea's like it's a great time to give up wine (laughs) hey guys i'm gonna pause for one second Um, Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get it together and I'm going to ask you guys. So who needs wine when you have me? Oh my God. Right. I feel like I'm a little bit high right now. Um, okay. So <laughs> we're back from technical difficulties and we're going to do our best to pick up where we left off. We were talking about COVID wear and the amazing turnout you guys had and Chelsea, you know, was gonna you're gonna tell me a little bit about how you guys came up with the idea and and how it was received because it not only was received really well locally but kind of internationally as well so so talk to me about what inspired COVID wear yeah so Alex if you cannot already tell is an extrovert um and I thought (laughs) quarantine was killing um and all of us for our sanity. Um, so we needed something creative to do. Um, and so we were in the backyard one day and Oliver, who is now our middle child, weird, um, was in diaper in a diaper and rain boots. <laughs> oh yeah. That's amazing. Fashion. Um, Hashtag and- Hashtag COVID <laughs> So we kind of got a kick out of that, but it also reminded us of friends and people we saw on social media that would show their face all made up pretty and then turn the camera around and it was like PJs or they were in their bed or kind of the reality of what we were all living. So we're like, why don't we photograph that? 
because it seems easy enough. Um, so we well, said, first we started like searching the internet. We're like someone has had yeah, to have done this. Like, we don't were, you love that when you're like, hell yeah, I am so clever. <laughs> no one else has done this yet. Go me. It was interesting. No one had like coined any terms. Like you'd see posts every now and then, but no one had really done anything about it. Um, so we're like, well, okay, here we go. Um, so we set up a studio in our garage, um, which was really the only space that we could. Um, we could clean it and we could sanitize it and kind of control the environment. We made it like tape air. Marker, so people were like six feet away. Yeah, and you could open it for some like air circulation in there, which was nice. Yes, and the first like month and a half of quarantine felt so good outside, so it was perfect. Um, but then we called a bunch of friends and said, hey, we have this really random, crazy idea. We want to do it. Um, and for whatever reason, all of our friends keep saying yes mm -hmm. to all of our random projects. Because you guys only do fun stuff. It yeah, seemed, our like I thought we were crazy because like someone would like drive up into our driveway. They'd get out of their car wearing like a suit and like boxers. And then the garage would come up. They'd walk <laughs> in the garage. The garage would come down. 15 minutes later, the garage would come up. <laughs> they're like, what are these people doing? Car. Yeah, they're probably like, <laughs> a news truck would show up. And then they're like. <laughs> it was really Yeah. I'm going to really expound on the things people probably thought you could have been doing in your garage. But I don't think any of them would have been legal. Um, probably not. So you started out with, you did it for like a, a weekend, right? And photographed. We were in that first weekend, I think. I think um, so. And then you guys, it kept going and kept going until you wound up with like almost 200 people. Yeah. We, I way. mean, the, the big idea was we wanted to do something that made fun of the season that we were in that did, wasn't disrespectful to the severity of COVID-19 and the incredible men and women who are serving in our community and communities across the world. But at the same time, like there is a mass, there's me, there is, there will be, there continue there will continue to be a massive mental health fallout from um, moments of isolation. And as creative individuals, we, I would talk to friends who said, man, I lost everything. I lost all my projects. I have no work. I uh, like, I don't know what I'm going to do for the first time in my life. I feel depressed. And so how could we combat the struggles of, you know, mental health? Uh, make people laugh. I mean, yeah. like it's a, it, it, as as cliche as it, it is. Like laughter is the best medicine in, in a season that we're in, where it's like one bad story after another bad story, and like I, I couldn't imagine being an elected official right now because you're choosing like one bad decision over another bad decision, and there's no winning per se. I mean, it's just like, survival. So, yeah, every, every single person is in like uncharted territory. And so how could we laugh? How could we put smiles on people's faces and how can we spread joy, not only in our lives and our friends' lives and our community, but really across the world. And you really did like people saw it across the world. Cause we're Facebook friends and we're friends IRL. And we would see some nice little vanity posts of like, Oh, COVID wear has been picked up in fancy pants publication here. And so like, what was the coolest one to you? Like brag a little bit. Um, Probably the, the one in the Netherlands. Well, there was like a fashion blog in the Netherlands that actually wrote about like quarantine fashion uh -huh. uh, and you used and, and asked us to use our project. I think like nerd geek, um, we had like two, um, like there's a company called Pro Photo. They make like the best photography lights uh, in the world. Um, the best photographers in the world use their gear, but they, um, I got a phone call one day. I was talking to their, uh, one of the people in their, their USA office. And they were saying, we've been passing your photos around the office and it's bringing so much joy to us. Um, and these are like, and these are people who literally see the best of the best, the best work, um, all over the world and so as as a a gear nut and a photographer that that was really cool uh, yeah. uh to see like certain companies that produce the equipment that we use to make the, the work that that like we we would reach out and just say hey we just want to let you know that this is something that we're doing thanks for making cool stuff and 
I, I mean, I, accolades don't really mean a whole lot to me. Like I, I literally live to like, I want my wife to think I'm cool. Um, and that's, and that's really, and that's really it. Like, like when she goes, man, that, that photo is really dope. I'm like, that's like, that checks all my boxes. <laughs> but, uh, we, we, another really cool bit was we actually did, uh, uh, like an 11 page spread with Florida politics and influence magazine. Uh, and Peter who owns the, the, the publication, um, called and said, Hey, uh, this really isn't contextual to like what we do, but what if we get a dozen political consultants, lobbyists, elected officials, whatever, and then we'll we'll publish we'll publish that, and it's a little more contextual. We're like, man, that's really cool. I but, feel really uh, bad that I didn't know you guys did that. I feel like a bad friend right now. That's okay. <laughs> well, if I you can did go the magazine and show it to you. Yeah, send us, make sure you send us some, some photos of that and we'll splice it in. My um, handsome AV guy will splice it in for us. So, got to meet all of these, like, we, we knew most of the people in the beginning, but then like friends started telling friends and then and the Florida Politics Project. So we're meeting these people and like, there were two people I can think of off the top of my head. We met and within five minutes, they're dropping their pants in our garage. And it's like, hi. <laughs> it's one of those like out of context. It's, it's very- just like a life goal, right? Just like. <laughs> Unless you're Rudy Gi- Giuliani on Borat. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what a terrible situation. Bless his heart. Keep that footage to yourself if you have anything like that. Our local politicians will thank you. Nope. <laughs> prefer to promote unity no. okay so i'm attempting to have some structure on this little podcast we're doing i'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> i know cut that part out aaron well he's, he's gonna make it all magical it's gonna be seamless so one of the things that i'm asking everyone is and this is my segment that we're calling shit happens i would like you to share with us a time that you failed at something it doesn't necessarily have to be business. It can be personal, but just a time that you failed and then how you overcame that failure. <laughs> Today? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you're willing to share and it doesn't have to be it just whatever you're comfortable with. Because failure is a part of life and it's definitely a part of running your own business. I'm trying to think of something that would make sense. <laughs> I, I would probably say the first, like early on in my life, I one of the first like regular jobs I did, I was in college and I would re- videotape high school football games uh, for, really? yeah, for the coaches. I know this. Yeah. Uh, because one of the things that like I would do is I would like, I would record the game and then they would have to um, they would need a VHS or a DVD by the end of the night. So like I, I would do it and then I'd have like an old school TV or my computer like rendering in the car as I was driving back. Wow. This was back before like <laughs> digital video. So you're still recording on tapes and having to right. capture tapes and all that kind of stuff. There was one time that I didn't use a new tape and I recorded over old stuff. But the problem was there was some magnetic interference issues because that's like what the tapes are made after. And half the video that I get, ended up having to give to the, the, this high school football coach was the football game. And half of it was ridiculous skits that we filmed for youth group at church. <laughs> um, and so I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. And then they never had me film another football game again. <laughs> oh, they were brutal. No second chances. This is not second chance you. This is, you're out. What did you learn from that? What did you learn? Obviously, your life moved on. You're, you know, that didn't end your career or anything. So what did you take away from that? Always check your tapes. (laughs) Um, You know, I, I think as silly as it is, one of my biggest faux pas when, um, like, I'm on a photo shoot is sometimes I'll forget memory cards. And there's been multiple times where I've called my wife and be like, babe, I'm setting up. I don't care what you're doing right now, but I need a memory card here in 14 and a half minutes. <laughs> um, so you learned nothing is what he's saying. Yes. I have saved multiple. 
Multiple shoots. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think details matter. Um, I think I think that's really really important. And I'd also say that like relationships cover a multitude of sins. Um, you know, there, there's plenty of times where something will mess up. <laughs> Technology messes up. Technology is fantastic until it and stops working. We um, had to pause this because of the internet. Right. And um, I've I've been on shoots where my computer has crashed, where things have gone wrong. Now, as we have grown in our career, we pretty much have backups of everything. So every shoot I go to, I'm bringing two laptops, multiple cameras, multiple lenses. I, I, if, if one thing goes wrong, I'm not going to be done. Um, but starting out and not being able to have the, the, the financial ability to purchase backups of my gear, um, that some of that was really, really tough. But I would say um, the relationships with clients and the way that you handle those situations are everything. Yeah. Um, because I think it goes back to what we talked about in the beginning. If we connect with people on a human level, then we're much, much more likely to offer grace. And that goes both ways, right? Yeah. Uh, that if, I, if something messes up, um, it's the same idea of like, as, as a parent, we have way more grace as parents than, you know, f flying on an airplane with a kid screaming its head off. There's a huge difference between like, if we were sitting across from each other and like college kid sitting Miserable. behind them, just wants to Netflix and chill, um, that has happened. <clears throat> which has happened to us. And so those, those are the biggest, those would be the, probably the biggest yeah. things from like seasons of failures. One, like maintain relationships always, always apologize. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, th th there was a, uh, here, here's a great situation. Um, there was a project we did this year, um, that, um, I'm trying, I want to explain it without like giving away too much. Um, there's a project we did that it was a photo shoot and we were introduced by like boss, boss's boss to like, media coordinator. Uh, we did this project. We ended up talking, texting, figuring out some details, ended up like person shared with their boss and said, I said something that I never said. Oh, no. um, you got a PR situation. Uh, and then, and then things just got funky and weird. And, and I would say like our posture in that was, I don't want anyone to ever question my integrity like my, our response to that was no matter what happened, we want to take responsibility. We want to give you your money back and just be done. And, 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 and through, and through not being combative, I think being combative is the worst because uh, and that's the encouragement. I would say uh, approach that not being combative and, and then you can salvage relationships. Yeah. It's so much about how you, it's not that you make a mistake, but it's how you handle it. You know, I think that like, and like you're saying related to children, like if you're, if your kid does something wrong and, but they fess up to it, then that's like, okay, that's cool. As opposed to doing something wrong, then lying about it, then lying on top of the lie. It's the same thing with adults. It's about how you, like everyone makes mistakes. No one's perfect, but it's about how you handle that that is more that tells more about your character than the fact that you made a mistake like everyone makes mistakes and that's part of why i want to ask this question is so other people can see like yes it hurts to make a mistake no one ever wants to do it especially when you're have perfectionist tendencies you know but i think it's important for other people to see like everyone everyone messes up you know so i i appreciate you sharing that with us Oh, Aaron is giving me um, a hard time. If it's okay with you guys, I'm going to ask our final question. You hear that? <laughs> what? It's like echo. It's like echoing like crazy on our side. Maybe it's just us. Anyways, um, I, I would say one last thing is that um, from an entrepreneur standpoint, a couple things that I had to learn early on was don't be the low cost provider. Once you're always the low cost provider, you're all like, once you're the low cost provider, you're always the low cost provider. Yep. That doesn't like maintain your value. Even if you do free work, 
maintain your value, whether it's a trade, sponsorship, something like you are important, you're valuable, maintain your value. The other piece of that is like write stuff down. Like the situations that we have gotten in the most trouble is when it's like last minute, someone's like, I need this done. And then we're like, cool, like, let's have a quick phone call. Let's get the project. And they're like, well, that we didn't really think it was going to be that much, or we thought it was going to be this. And, and then things get weird. And so, um, do your best to write everything down, especially when you're doing a service as well as, um, you know, try really, really hard to maintain expectation. A lot of creative folks in particular do not do a good job from expectation management. And that's ultimately where clients get frustrated in that. Yeah, that's a really, I could dive into that one because Aaron and I both have creative field backgrounds. I'm going to put a pin in that though, because I think that that's like such a good point. Turn the down. Oh, pardon me. You got to wrap it up because we're over half hour. Okay. So my producer, oh man, no, he's the worst, you guys. He's lucky he's so cute. Okay. So. <clears throat> This is how I wrap up every podcast. I want to ask you guys my final question. And it is probably going to be a little painful for you given that you have two children. And now a third that's 12 days old. But how do you sleep at night? How many pillows are you sleeping on? I can see your bed's lovely. It was got a queen size. I like it. No. Yeah. So how do you sleep at night? How many hours are you getting? You know, how's it how's it going your sleep life? <laughs> You're funny. Um, <laughs> Alex, Alex can go to sleep and then just be out. Like, it's so annoying. I wake up 75 times without a newborn. Yeah. Um, when I was pregnant, I think I had at least six pillows at all times, under the belly, between the knees, behind the back, under my head, all the things. Now I still have at least four. Um, <laughs> but when you have to wake up because someone's hungry or you have to pee or all the things like it just sleep is what is sleep what is sleep your parents lol yeah you know we we're really really blessed our our oldest keegan started sleeping through the night at nine months old uh our second kid oliver started sleeping through the night at nine weeks old wow you drugging these kids or what what's going on over there just magic Good for you. That's just good karma. That's just living, living right. And, and obviously like we're, we're wake, we're waking up every couple hours. We, Chelsea is waking up every couple hours to feed Charlie. Um, good answer. <laughs> I, I um, can sleep like a rock. There's two things that wake me up, pressure change and light. And if those things don't happen, I don't wake up. Such a blessing. Um, so we, we, we are, we, we do have, I think we were order number three for our one fresh pillows. I of think all you were. Yeah. This is not an obligation of being on the podcast, but it just so happened. Look at that blue tag. Sleep tight. One fresh. Oh, look at that. She's so one fresh funny. kids. Now we just need like, she needs like a one fresh nursing pillow and a one fresh like body pillow. Oh, listen. So like I've been using the king size. I'll bring you some king size because that has been a game changer for us. I use the king size as kind of like a body pillow. So I will do that for you. We'll bring some king size over. You guys, thank you so much for being on here. You're the sweetest. Thank you for bearing with our technical difficulties. Final thing, where can we find you online and how can we help your businesses right now? Uh, gosh, we are the workmans.com has um, most up to date stuff. Most in every other, you know, we month. just had a baby. Give us a little right. <laughs> yeah. gotcha. um, uh, stuff on social at we are the workmans. Um, you follow some of our work. I admittedly not very good at sharing the things that we create. Uh, but ultimately we just love to love to hang out and get to know the people in our community calendar.wearetheworkmans.com. We'd love to grab coffee, uh, and hang out and hear your story. And that's probably the, that's probably the best thing. Like let's grab coffee sometime. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll figure out what we can do to serve, serve you, uh, there. You guys are like literally and genuinely two of the nicest people we know. And so I'm so appreciative that you were willing to take time out of your day. 
You're just, we love you so much. And thank you for being on our little podcast. And thanks for being so much fun. And thanks for bringing Charlie. Oh, you bet. Hey, can't wait for season two. We'll make sure we have all three kids in the bed at the same time. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk later. Podcast right, podcast tight. See you. (laughs) It's such a nut. Bye. That's it for another episode of One Fresh Podcast. I want to give a huge thanks to Alex and Chelsea Workman, but especially to sweet baby Charlie for being wonderful podcast guests. As always, I want to shout out my husband, who is a beautiful, although harsh, producer in the background. We'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thanks so much. <laughs>